Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded and our companion focus playthrough. So, uh, yeah, in the previous episode, we had some rather amazing victories, especially for the companions in the tournaments. Oh, yeah, that companion only tournament was super, super fun, in my opinion. Hopefully, we're going to be able to see more of those in the future. And I'm actually going to be escorting a caravan in the first part of this episode. Now, bear in mind, this caravan is going to give me about 500 gold every single time it goes to a town. And I believe we're going to be going to, yes, we're going to be going to five different settlements. So that means that we're going to be getting 2,500. We're also going to be gaining a significant amount of charm skill and relation and all manner of wonderful things. I'm actually wondering what I should do right now, because here's the thing. What I've done, and you may, I think you might be able to understand this, but generally what I've done is I have enabled the auto allocation of perks and focus points, attribute points and all that stuff for our companions. Because in the end, what is going to happen is I'm literally just going to be spending hours upon hours cumulatively just spending those perks and we're not going to be playing the game and that is obviously the main <laughs> that is obviously the main problem you know that's the main problem with um you know dealing with that anyway let's take a look here you could see that we've got a, a couple of people i actually don't know who's good at writing skill right now i think who, who's actually good oh yeah by the way i recruited salia now if you saw her in the previous episode then you'll know exactly why i decided to go for her because she's just an absolute beast so hopefully she's going to show herself to be amazing and otherwise i'm not seeing any writing skill here from anyone ah there we go this guy this guy has good writing skill and he is actually using a horse as well so he's going to be the horse archer person and there we go. All right, that sounds pretty nice to me. All right, let's, uh, actually, should I just tell everyone to charge, actually? Because I'm pretty sure we're gonna be fine here. Polemark is absolutely murdering every single thing he can with his crossbow. He's always extremely impressive with that weapon. Although uh, not so impressive when I am getting myself murdered because he's not helping me with his one-handed. Yes, let's uh, refer back to a previous episode for the wonderful, wonderful memory that is being murdered by a bunch of bandits in a bandit hideout because he decided to bring out his crossbow. Yeah, don't know why he decided to do that, but he did, he did, you know, and as a result, we kind of had a bit of an issue. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do some damage here. Maybe get, you know, maybe get a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of athletic skill here and there. That might be quite nice. Obviously, bear in mind that I would like to try and level up my uh, bow skill a little bit more as well. And I feel like I haven't done that enough. Is that just me? I, I, I don't know. I feel like I haven't really done that enough. So I'm going to have to do something about that. And our influence is actually really bad. But to be fair... It actually doesn't make that much difference because influence as a mercenary is very negligible in the way that you can spend it. And I believe that because we are a mercenary, yeah, as you can see right here, because we are a mercenary, we lose a certain amount every single day. And I, I, think, that's, I think that's pretty fair. I think that's pretty fair, to be honest, because you really do not want to have, realistically, shall we say, a mercenary company able to influence affairs of state. You know, you don't want them coming in and basically saying, oh yes, um, yeah, mercenary wages, they're going to be increased. You know, I mean, obviously this is very much an exaggeration of what they, you know, have the power to do and everything, but, you know, the point stands that you don't really want mercenaries coming in and just doing some random stuff. Anyway, let's just wait here for some time, wait for the caravan to leave there they are fantastic and now they're traveling to Varchek. okay so obviously this is another wonderful point about escorting the caravan you're going to get a nice opportunity to wander all over the world and see exactly what's going on and you can see here look at this the vlandians are being absolutely massacred by a bunch of azurai at the moment which is very nice to see to be honest i very much appreciate that and now let's just go in here. We're just going to do a nice little auto-resolve to get these guys out the way. And we're just going to continue to take these guys prisoner. 
as much as we possibly can and of course take all of their loot. Now the one thing that is really fantastic about actually heading into these fights is that it does give me a very easy opportunity to level up my own skills as Hologen is now taken prisoner by a minor faction. Ooh, they grind my gears. They grind my gears super hard right there. But anyway, I almost have 225 in athletics. I am going to have to use my bow much more. But you got to bear in mind that I actually have an extremely poor bow. I really do. My bow skill is only as good as my equipment, basically. I mean, I know, I know, a bad workman blames his tools and all that wonderful, you know sayings and so on and so forth all those wonderful things but um yes it is true in this case i mean <laughs> uh what am i saying is it true that a bad workman does blame his tools aka i am a bad archer maybe you know sometimes yes definitely i, I could definitely be considered a pretty terrible shot however in this case I think you might be able to forgive me because my bow is frankly one of the worst things I've ever seen. You can see here it is a cracked, simple, short bow that requires 30 bow skill. Do I have anything better actually? I was, I was kind of thinking that maybe I would, but no, it doesn't seem like I do. That's kind of unfortunate. Anyway, we did actually level up our scouting skill, so I might as well get 5% movement speed bonus during the night time. That sounds pretty nice to me. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm thinking what we're going to do is the next, um, should we say, the next Distinguished Service promotion that comes up. What we're going to do is we're going to give that particular companion a certain assignment. And the assignment is basically going to be the best possible caravanier that they can possibly be. That is pretty much what we're going to aim for there, because um, I think one of you or a couple of people actually said in the comments, hey, you know what? Because of the Distinguished Service, it's going to be super easy for me specifically to make a companion or a number of companions that can be super, super effective at trading and running caravans. And that is actually super true. I, I'm... You know, that's the thing. I have not used Distinguished Service in a while, and so as a result, I'm very much an amateur. I'm very much a novice in utilizing all of its potential. And that is exactly the reason why you are there with me. You are there along the journey with me because you do have these ideas and, you, and, you know, then I can, you know, possibly implement them and then we can have a grand, grand amount of fun seeing the results of our combined efforts and then we can see what happens but um yes that is definitely going to be something that i am going to look forward to we very much just need to get into fights though that's the whole thing i can't just continue auto resolving again and again and again so i will have to do that i just wanted to get this out of the way and there you go look at that we literally gained actually a lot more than i anticipated I thought we were only get about, uh, I thought we were only going to get about 2500 but we actually gained 6000 <laughs> 6900 which is pretty crazy in my opinion anyway let's see what we can do here should we go into vlandian territory i think we will oh yeah by the way i am going to start recruiting a number of units from other places so i'm not only going to utilize one particular faction's units and i i think i've already shown that i've kind of done that because, you know, while I am using a pretty extensive amount of Azurai units, that doesn't actually mean that I'm going to be staying with them by themselves. Usually, if I'm going to be playing a Loyalist playthrough in any certain, you know, respect, I'm not going to have anything else. So, for example, I'm not going to have Vlandian Bannonites, I'm not going to have Imperial Legionaries, or Palatine Guards, or Vlandian Crossbowmen, and so on and so forth. So, don't worry, I am going to continue recruiting a wide variety of different play people from different places and all that wonderful stuff. And that is hopefully going to make everything much more fun as well, because then we're going to have the opportunity to gain companions through distinguished service from a wide variety of different walks of life because obviously we're not then going to have you know the entirety of my army consisting of Azurai or Vlandians or Imperials it's going to be everyone you know and that's going to be super fun okay hello there sir 
Why did, did you, did you see that right there? He was being very, uh, very weird and a bit suspicious. Okay, so he's moving at 4.9. Okay. <laughs> what, what is, what is this guy's deal? You see this guy? You know what I'm going to do? I'm literally just going to go around the side. Yep, look at that. I have outsmarted him. Oh, yes. I have outsmarted him. Now you will do battle with me, sir. Oh, yes. I will catch you whether you like it or not. There we go. Thank you very much. And now let's do battle, sir. Let us do battle. Okay, so let me actually just make sure that I have... Aha, here we go. We actually do have a perk in medicine. So let's have a look. 30% chance per day to recover a lame horse. Uh, this is if you are tagged a surgeon, I believe, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Oh yeah, both of these are actually if you are tagged a surgeon in your party. Uh, I think I'm probably going to go for Siege Medic, because the other thing, while it is good, I don't think it's going to be that useful. So I'm going to go for Siege Medic, even though I'm not actually going to be tagging myself as surgeon or anything like that. I'm actually unsure whether it does enable itself if you are just tagged as a sort of generalist in your clan's role screen because it might very well be the case that while it does say surgeon it might be that you know if you have the most medicine skill and maybe you have the perk maybe it makes a difference but a lot of people have said in the past that that is not the case and if there's a quartermaster tag skill for example you're going to need to be the quartermaster to make that work so that's good to know, and um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I always kind of hope that they change it a little bit, but obviously they very much want you to, uh, shall we say, focus and specify to a variety of units that, that you want them to do this specific thing, and then as a result, they're going to be very good at that specific thing. For example, get an engineer, get a medic, get a scout, get a whatever and then just go on from there. So yeah, that does make sense. And it very much lends itself to the whole, you know, warband way of doing things as well, because obviously, uh, you know, in, in Bannerlord, I have said before that I personally feel like the companions, I mean, they die really fast. I mean, it's really funny that I haven't actually lost anyone just yet. I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of thought to myself, is this too risky? You know, when I was first starting this and I was doing the research about, you know, which mods I should get and which ones I should install and, and so on, I thought, is this actually going to work? Because in the past, I have literally only had disappointing experiences with companions. Because not, not, not because I don't spend any money on them, but because I do spend money on them. And as a result of me spending money on them, I'm basically spending, you know, um, I mean, in past series, sometimes I have spent upwards of 100,000 kitting someone out in some of the best possible gear that I have available to me at the time. And then all of a sudden they get killed. And then all that gear is lost. You see, that is the main reason why I, you know, I was a little bit dubious about it. But it's actually kind of cool because it does give me a little bit um, I mean, at least with Distinguished Service. I think without Distinguished Service mod, I think it would be mm, maybe maybe a little bit a little bit riskier to be honest, because then they don't come with their own gear, and you're going to need to outfit them in whatever stuff you potentially have, and then it's going to be mm, a little bit touch and go. You know, it's going to be one of those one of those cases where you think to yourself, ah, oh, you know. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you know, X person does not die. For example, Polmark, you know, Polmark started off with nothing. And Lundana, she started off with nothing as well. They started off with some rusty swords and what have you. And it's just super nice to actually have both of them still with us, basically, you know, because I was very, very worried when we only had Polmark, I thought to myself, okay, he's probably going to end up dying relatively quickly, you know, because that's just how the game is sometimes, you know, companions do tend to die, but I'm actually wondering whether they've changed the percentage chance for companions to perish um, in the game files, because I haven't changed that at all. You saw at the very beginning of the series what kind of difficulty settings I had, and I have left it on realistic which I know that one of you actually did mention that you tend to play on 50% because that seems a bit more balanced. And I, I think if, if I had lost a bunch of companions so far, 
I, I might have folded and I might have thought to myself, okay, I'm going to just go for it. You know, I'm going to go for the 50% because it seems like everyone is just dropping like flies and I don't really want to be left with, well, no one, you know, because that kind of defeats the purpose of the series, doesn't it? Anyway, we're going to be taking strong legs here because that decreases fall damage and I absolutely love it. I think that that is probably one of the best, m most favorite perks of mine just because I am just so terrible at staying on the walls in a variety of different places so yeah hopefully that's going to work out really nicely for us and otherwise i believe we're pretty good yeah i believe we're pretty good we're doing quite nicely in terms of our gold and i'm also going to be looking out for a bow so let me actually have a look here do, do, do we have a bow here ah there's a ranger bow is that actually any good though ah uh, it's not looking i mean these things are not looking particularly good yeah, these are looking actually pretty awful. I, You know what I should do? Yeah, you guessed it. I should probably go to Batanian territory, let's face it. Batania has the best archers, or, you know, some, sometimes, I mean, the Palatine Guards are pretty good as well, but if you take into account noble units, then Batanian Fian champions, of course, are the best. All right, let me see what I can do here. I'm... I mean... Sh this is basically pointless for me to go in here, isn't it? So I'm literally just going to go for a nice little auto resolve there. I don't think it's really worth me personally going in. The only reason why I wanted to go in here is for the uh, very sparse amount of prisoners. We do get a little bit of experience, the charm skill, all that stuff. And we do have the opportunity. Oh, look at that. Very nice. A nice, nice new helm. And you can see here that everyone else is getting a new helmet as well because everyone is passing, you know their old equipment down the line to the next person, which is actually really nice. I like that. That is a very cool feature of the best or best auto equip mod. Anyway, let's just sell that. There we go. And you know what I'm actually going to do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a um, I'm going to buy a business, but I'm not entirely sure which business. So let's have a look here. This is the owner of the tannery brewery silversmith. Is there a silver mine nearby? Yes, there is. OK, I'm going to buy this guy's silversmith. That's going to cost me 14000 I don't know whether that's actually going to be any good, to be honest. I, I really have no idea, but I think it could be quite fun to find out whether the workshop is actually kind of useful or not, because it's been a while since I've done anything like that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't leave, sir. Okay, here we go. I'm hoping very much that there are going to be did the tournament just end? I think the tournament just ended. Oh, I am forever disappointed right now. Oh, I am forever disappointed. Okay, well, yeah, there you go, there you go. I mean, that happens, right? I mean, I thought to myself, oh, there's, it's bound to last a couple of days, at least. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I go to enter the tournament, because I noticed that there was an army here, so I thought, oh, there's going to be a lot of nobles, and maybe we're going to have the opportunity to, you know, uh, reap the uh, the benefits of all of these um, all of these enemies, uh, enemies, all of these allies right next to us right here, and that's going to then obviously turn them into enemies, and then we're going to fight them and hopefully get some wonderful, wonderful rewards as a result of that, but unfortunately that is not the case this time around. Oh well, never mind. Okay, yeah, we're going to go over to Vlandian territory very quickly after this as well. But basically, what I would like to do, I don't want to do another, I don't want to do another escort mission if, if at all possible. Is there another silver mine around here? Because there's a silversmith in Sanala. I'm actually kind of, yes, there is. Yes, that particular little village over there, but there isn't anything else. I think the brewery would probably be better. You can see here we are making nothing from the enterprise that we just bought. Uh, just yet. <laughs> uh, yes, isn't that isn't that the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing? Um, yeah, the brewery is is quite good. But let let me actually just take a quick look here. Uh, the brewery makes beer, right? I mean, I assume it makes beer. I mean, that's the thing. It turns grain into beer, right? Isn't that what it isn't that what it does? I think that's what it does. And what what does the silversmith actually do? Let me let me take a look here. So we have silver ore in here, and that turns silver ore into jewelry, I assume. 
Is that actually is that actually good? Hmm. Okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to take a chance and we're going to bet on the silversmith. That's going to cost me 15,000. All right. Not not too bad, not too bad. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to Ascar real quick because I'm pretty sure that if any place has war horses, it's going to be Ascar. So I'm going to go over there and see if we can potentially buy a couple of them. And by a couple, I mean over 100 if I can afford it. Oh. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll buy six. <laughs> I'll buy six. Yes, that, uh, that's not particularly great, is it? No, not particularly good at all. But they are going to be necessary for leveling up our forces, as you can see right here. There you go. Boom. You use six horses for the upgrades. <laughs> Literally the six horses that I just purchased. Uh, that is always amusing. That is actually something that I've been talking about for a while. I don't know whether they have changed this or not. We're going to buy some more war horses along the way here as well, because these villages obviously do produce the horses from the source, basically. But yeah, as I, as I said before, I have been talking about, uh, you know, like other ways of uh, finding the ability to produce war horses. Um, and I'm not, even, I'm not even talking about on demand here or anything like that. I'm basically talking about well, making it a little bit more accessible because it is it is very difficult. I mean, let's just let's let's face it. What if you're not down in Azerai territory? You know, what what if what if you're far away from Azerai territory and Asgar is nowhere to be seen for you? What if you're at war against them? It's going to be very difficult for you to get some war horses. I mean, I'm sure there's a place that you can buy war horses somewhere else, but the point is, it's just a bit tricky, isn't it? It's just a bit tricky. And I think that it would be kind of cool if you could potentially, as the player, create some kind of structure in a village or in a castle or in a town or something like that that would either automatically produce war horses by importing regular horses and then training them up to be war horses, if you know what I mean. So there would be a little bit of a wait time or production time in regard to you know the amount of effort and, and money and all that stuff invested in the particular pursuit of war horse production um but obviously that is very much a case of uh I, I think that's a bit of a pipe dream at the moment to be honest for me because um <laughs> it, it's something that I've, I've been talking about for a while obviously um they've done a, a wide variety of wonderful things in the latest update and i personally very much enjoyed reading their change log i thought the change log was really really good and did mention a wide variety of really nice changes so for example they're um improving the amount of of different battle terrain they uh, talked about the charm skill rework, as I thought, because I've, obviously I've mentioned this a number of times already in this series, that they have indeed changed how the charm skill tree was, and they've made it a lot better, or at least I think they've made it a lot better. And um, yeah, it actually, it's made a huge difference in my opinion. It's made a huge difference in how effective the tree is. And I'm hoping that they're going to do relatively similar things to a number of the other perk trees as well. And um, if they do, if they do it that way, if they do it the way that they've been doing it with the charm skill tree, I am going to be infinitely pleased. Because the way that they've done it with the charm skill tree, every single perk gives me a difficult decision to make. And I very much like that. You know, I like being forced oh you know that look at this oh, this perk's fantastic but also this one's fantastic you know both of these are gonna be just amazing and i, I really want to use both of them but unfortunately i have to choose and that's the kind of situation that is going to be great you know that's a it's a it's a joyful situation to be in you know because instead of having a situation where you're thinking to yourself wow this perk absolutely sucks you know, you really don't want to be choosing between these two perks because they are just so bad. You know, that's the kind of thing that you want to try and avoid. You really never want to be in a situation where 
you're thinking to yourself, these two perks are so bad, it doesn't make any difference what I decide. You know what I mean? That's the kind of thing. So it's going to be super, super fun to see what they end up doing with the other perk trees if they decide to rework those. I mean, I, I, I definitely think some of them could definitely use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of work on them. But I wouldn't say that all of them need... Um, I'm going to die here. Maybe. I wouldn't say that all of them need changes. Um, I, th I think there are a number of them that are pretty good. For example, athletics. I think the ath athletics skill tree is really nice. There is only a handful of options that I actually um, have at the top of my head right now because there's, there's one perk in the athletics tree that has nothing to do with athletics. And I've talked about this before, obviously, so... You know, apologies if it's boring to you or whatever, but generally, some of the time, there are perks that shouldn't be in those places, and that's that's basically the bottom line. And, um, you know, at least in my opinion, obviously, you can have a different opinion, as I've said before, and uh, some people still don't understand that. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I'm not entirely sure why, even though I literally say it. I really have no clue. It's like, uh, you know, it's like... Um, I, I, uh, yeah, it's it's really really funny. It's it's like those people that go, um, yeah, this game is this game is free, right? This game is free to play, or you know whatever, and um, and and they and they're, and they're like, oh yeah, but it should it should always it should be free, like completely free, and you should be able to play it with unlimited amounts of well benefit to you, you know. For example, you know, so the the development team that worked on the game, they don't need to pay their rent, they don't need to feed their families, they don't need to send their kids to school, they don't need to do any of that, because let's face it, the only thing they do is work on that game and make sure that it's 100% free for you. And I'm talking to those people that have those audacious ideas. I, I really have no idea, you know, what goes what goes on through their heads. Oh, that's super funny. Because I mean, in general, I mean, if you think about it, game development itself is incredibly expensive. And I, I mean, I obviously have no experience in that myself. But I've read a number of articles in the past. You know, there's always been these kinds of um, these kinds of uh, you know articles, pieces, uh, you know, in various publications that detail how expensive it actually is and how, how expensive it turns out to be. And it has bankrupted many an indie developer as well as AAA and all that stuff. So it, it very much, you know, makes a big difference to um, keep that in mind, you know. If you're complaining about a free-to-play game, obviously, let's face it, if the free-to-play game has some kind of pay-to-win system, then obviously that's not good. You know, that's not, that's not a that's not the way to go in terms of microtransactions. But I'm I'm talking about if it's only cosmetic and has no impact on gameplay, I don't see what the problem is. These people need to make a living. <laughs> what what what's the problem with that? Everyone needs to make a living in some way, right? I mean, isn't that the world we live in? Anyway. We have some people. I really wish I could level up more than just two. We have Vlandian Bananite and Azurai Vanguard Fares. So we're going to be going for both of these because they are both noble. I think that the Fares is a noble unit. I could be wrong about that. So I do apologize if it's not. But the Bananite surely is. All right, here we go. Okay, so Ethan Bold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Hold your horses. <laughs> Hold your horses. All right, yeah. So Ethan Bold the Bold. I mean, literally, why didn't he just get called Bold Bold the Bold? Or Bold 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 Bold. <laughs> oh, the ludicrous nature of these names is just absolutely fantastic. That really is amazing. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to make this guy the caravan ma uh, master, the caravan leader, because I think he's going to have a massive amount of riding skill as it is. I think that's going to be super fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to give him 100 additional trade. We're going to give him 
probably scouting and we need to give him one more thing so what do we want to do steward i guess steward maybe because that's gonna no actually steward is not 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 that good for him because if he's running a caravan he is restricted to about 30 units anyway so that makes no difference so i guess what i'm gonna do is just give him riding skill yeah I think I'll probably just give him writing skill. I mean, charm skill is not a really that important. Medicine could be kind of important. Maybe I'll give him medicine. I'll give him medicine because he's going to have a decent amount of writing skill anyway. So we'll give him medicine, trade, and scouting. Boom. There you go. Look at that. He had nothing in scouting. He had a little bit in trade already, and he had a little bit in medicine as well. But there you go. All right. So now we have the opportunity to level up Darim the Vanguard. Why Why was his name Darim the Darim? Why wasn't it that? I'm not entirely sure. Now I'm disappointed. Uh, well, obviously, that's a joke. But anyway, let's have a look here. Leadership, trade. Well, I kind of want him to just literally have... Uh, party leader skills so I'm thinking we'll probably go for scouting riding and maybe maybe tactics actually maybe tactics maybe no no I think steward actually steward is going to be really good for him because that's going to increase his overall you know what let's not do riding let's do something else let's do let's do tactics I think that sounds much better at least in, uh, actually you know medicine's really good too ah oh, this is this is annoying this is annoying. To be able to only pick three. Okay, we're going to go for medicine, steward, and scouting. There we go. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Because if he's going to become a party leader, and we're going to want him to eventually become one of our vassals, then it's going to make all the difference in the world for him to have those skills already boosted up. And he's going to be an absolute monster on the battlefield, which I am very much looking forward to. So yes, hopefully we'll be able to see that relatively quickly. And um, yeah, someone actually said, why am I not taking the looters and various other rescued prisoners? All right, so the deal with this is I cannot level these up, okay? I can't level these up because I do not have veterans respect. As far as I'm aware, you still need that to be able to level bandit troops from bandits into regular um, regular loot, uh, regular looters, no, <laughs> regular bandits, uh, regular bandits, no, regular troops, what, what am I thinking right now, oh, well, never mind, yes, but I actually don't have veterans respect, and that's the only reason why that is not happening, anyway, we're going to be upgrading most of our people right here, um, Ethan Bold and all those, all those people, they literally can just take whatever they want, because, they already have horses, as you can see. Look at look at him. He's got a trusty Azerai horse, and he's using a literal trusty reinforced half-plate barding. I mean, literally, Darim is going to be an absolute monster when he actually gets onto the battlefield properly. Wow. Yeah, th these are going to be super fun to watch. These guys are going to be so crazy good. And, I mean, you can look at this guy right here. Look at this guy. I'm super pleased I didn't give him riding skill now as well, by the way, because as you can see, he already has 300 in it. So it's not like he actually needs it, right? And otherwise, he's got a massive amount of polearm skill. He's got medicine. He's got trade, riding, scouting. Uh, he's even got one-handed a little bit as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's move on and we'll see what I can do. So I'm gonna go into Otisia here because obviously I have a number of prisoners that I would like to sell. I have 21,000 of them, no less. Uh, actually, 21,000 golds worth of them, <laughs> not 21,000 prisoners. If I had 21,000 prisoners, that would be pretty good. <laughs> that would be pretty good, but yes, that's a bit, maybe a bit overkill. Anyway, let's have a look here. I'm just wondering whether they've changed their bows. No, they have not. There is actually a better bow here. I mean, generally, I would probably say this is a better bow, but I can't use it on horseback, although I'm not actually using a horse to begin with anyway, so maybe this makes no difference to me. Yeah. Probably doesn't, right? Okay, so apart from that, what do we want to do? We want to form a caravan. Yes, we do. Okay, I want to form a caravan. I'm actually going to pay for a better one. And I'm going to pay 5,000 gold extra. And we're going to make... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I find that name so funny. But yes, Ethan Bold, the Bold, uh, is going to be the leader. 
and I paid 5,000 extra, and you can see here, he actually doesn't even have anything really that good. I mean, he's got some Imperial veteran caravan guards and regular caravan guards, but that's basically it. Everyone else is basically just armed traders, and that doesn't really uh, inspire much confidence, unfortunately. So I suppose we'll see what happens there, but um, yes, Ethan Bold the Bold. Good luck, sir. That is all I can tell you. Good luck. And, oh, we leveled up. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to be going for another point in bow skill, another point in control. And we finally have 281 in one hand as well, so we're going to have even more damage, even more speed to utilize. And I'm actually wondering, are there any nobles in here? Because there is a tournament going on. I know, I know, maybe it's not even a really good idea to participate in the tournament any further. But I'm so incredibly impressed with how our, our, our companions have handled themselves in these tournaments that I always just want to go in just to see what they're like in these situations. I think that's super fun. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in here. There are no nobles. Oh, well, that's kind of that's kind of disappointing. That is kind of disappointing, to be fair. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is actually a companions-only tournament once again, and uh, we you know what? Let, let's, let's actually see. Yeah, you know, let's actually see what happens here. Let's uh, let's watch the round. Place your bets. I think Fool is going to win. Okay, well that was. I mean, literally, her, look at this. Her, the anvil, uh, literally only has... Tw he only has 107 in one-handed skill, if you can believe that. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so now it is my turn. Let's do this. I'm with Lundana, so I'm very much hoping that she's going to be fantastic. I'm with the other Sharasa brother, and I'm with Fakir. I mean, I'm not with, with, with Fakir, but, he, you know, he's obviously wanting to murder me. So let's see what happens here. I don't have a ranged weapon. I just have a one-handed. Let's see how we do. Ow. Lundana, why'd you let me down? Ooh, okay, um, yeah. I was a bit worried there for a second. I thought to myself, wait a minute, why am I running away from a guy that basically has, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think he has like, what, three, 300 in athletics or something like that? So I have no idea what I was thinking running away from him. Um, but I... <laughs> It was just survival instinct, you know? It's like one of those things where you just think to yourself, uh, I should probably get out of here, you know? I should probably get out of here and see what happens. Okay, so Polmark is actually on the red team, and he's up against... Okay, never mind. He's not up against anything, because apparently he is now on the ground, and Sotheris is completely murdering everyone. Oh, yes, he is. What a, what a fantastic fellow. Okay, so Nolden. Nolden is now in this round. Everyone else is just some random. So Nolden is on the red team. There he goes. Is that him? Did he? Yeah, he just murdered. Okay, yeah, never mind. He just murdered both of them, which is, well, <laughs> uh, pretty natural to expect, I suppose. And uh, now who are we with? Okay, we're with Lundana again. I, I, I expect you to do a little bit better this time, Lundana. Where are you going? Can I, can I not order you around? I can't order these companions around in the tournament. Okay, well, um, he completely just murdered me. And I'm talking about in actual cold blood right here. He, uh, he basically did the whole John Wick thing against me right there. So that was, uh, that was kind of interesting. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Thule versus Sotheris. Let's have a look. Who's going to win? Oh, okay. Uh, apparently Sotheris is going to win. He is absolutely massacring everyone with impunity here. He is not caring about any of the relationships that we have cultivated in our time together. Because let's face it, he's joined our, our party um, not that long ago. 
Oh, no, never mind. Thule is now taking back the crown. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't he the guy that won the tournament last time? I think it is. Okay, here we go. Thule is on the blue team. And her, the anvil, is on the red team. Place your bets. Who do you think is going to win? Because for me, for me personally, I am going to, I'm going to go for the favorite. I'm going to go for the favorite, which is Thule. Um, I, you know what? I actually think I might have jinxed him now. So I'm actually just going to say that I'm not going to go for anyone because I think in general, if I decide that I'm going to go for someone, they're going to get killed themselves first very, very fast. So let's see what happens. Oh, oh, the damage. Oh, the damage. The damage coming out from Thule right there. I mean, literally, I mean, I, I, I suppose it kind of makes sense, to be honest, that that was, uh, that was going to happen, because I don't know whether you noticed, but her, the anvil, literally only has 125 in one-handed, and Thule, I believe, has about 200 and something, so it is kind of to be expected that that would happen and lundana gets a new pair of gloves which is pretty nice i like that okay let me just take a quick look Thule has yes mm -hmm. exactly he has 323 in one handed and um who was the guy that he beat her the anvil yeah he's a two-handed weapon user as you can see right there he has uh how much he has 215 in two-handed and so yeah he's obviously probably not even going to win if he was using a two-handed but he was using a one-handed which obviously is the main reason so yeah that's indeed the reason why he ended up losing that anyway let's move on let's move on and see what we can do uh guarantor castle why are you not taking that anymore they were they were attempting to take it but now they're not taking it oh hecard is over there as well let's see Hecard? What are you doing? Jean Jean-Luc Hecard. Yes, indeed. Is that his is that his first name? <laughs> Probably not, right? Okay, so let me have a look here. Oh yeah, Spring of Gold. This is absolutely fantastic. At least I personally think that Spring of Gold is really, really good. I don't really like Silver Tongue, so I'm gonna be taking Spring of Gold because 0.1% interest per day on the gold you have, and it's capped at 1,000 per day. Generally, that doesn't sound very good, but I personally think that it is, it's, it's quite a nice little tidy sum, you know? It's a, a nice little bonus that you're going to get every uh, every day or so. So I think it's it's not too bad. Okay, so wait a minute. I don't care about you, Mr. Caravan Master. I'm just going to be letting you go on, and let's do battle. Let's do battle against these Vlandians. So let's just try to eliminate them as best we can. Now, I actually think that he has... Some, yes, he does. Yes. Fakir actually has some pretty good uh, horse archer perks. Yeah, not, not bad. Not bad. I mean, they obviously could be better, but I, I don't think he's really specced that much into, uh, that much into those, those kinds of things. Anyway, um, let's have a look. Why do I... Wait a minute, did you see that right there? Why am I spawning this way, w w this way around? Was it the last update that seems to cause that? Because for me, I'm literally, sp is it just me that's sp thinking that I'm spawning the wrong way around and then I have to turn around to see where the enemies are coming from? I'm actually not entirely sure. Maybe I'm gonna have to watch that back in, uh, in the editing process or something, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It felt like that on the previous, um, one of the previous battles as well, where I thought to myself, where, where are the enemies? And then I turn around while holding the alt key and I see that they are literally 180 degrees behind me. So it's a bit weird. Oh, no, that wasn't weird. That was a nice hit if ever I saw one. Thank you very much. Can I do some more damage here then? Yeah, I, you know, I actually really like the mace. I mean, I've always liked maces, to be honest. I mean, you know, maces generally are pretty much my best friend in terms of weapon type. Because they are so good at dealing with heavily armored troops that you pretty much can't get anything better. Like, the only thing you can do is probably get, like, a piercing weapon of some kind. And they are pretty rare, actually, in Bannerlord. At least, I think they seem pretty rare. I think that the developers are wanting to sort of encourage a little bit more thrusting gameplay if you want piercing damage to uh, to happen. Because there used to be a number of uh, weapon types or a number of types of weapon 
that would be piercing only. And these things would be like, um, you know, mining picks, and uh, I think that you could even get some war picks and, and stuff like that. And those are the kinds of things that generally you would need if you wanted to utilize a swinging, uh, a swinging style of gameplay. And generally, obviously, that doesn't really happen in Battle Lord. Not entirely sure why, actually. Maybe it's the um, it's the prequel nature of the game, because obviously, uh, if you know anything about the, the history of Battle Lord, then it's set before Warband in terms of the chronology in the history of Cal Radio. So yeah, there's also that. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do a little bit of... Oh, really? I thought that was a hit. I thought that was a hit right there. Okay, well. Yes, I hit someone. Fantastic. I hit my own unit. Ah, yes, fantastic. I hit my own unit again. You know, if we if we imagine that these are enemy units, I'm doing very, very well. Although I'm doing extremely little damage. So maybe it's best that we just call those misses. Should we, should we just say that they're misses? Yes, yes, why not? Why not? Are we all agreed? Yes, I think we are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah. I actually really think the Banner Lord is looking really, really pretty as well. Have you noticed how the graphics and the and the bloom coming over the hill there? It looks really nice. Sun shafts and everything, the, the, the dust being kicked up by the varieties of cavalry riding through here. Super nice. Anyway, we do have a number of Azurai veteran infantry. I'm going to be leveling up the Imperial Legionary as well, just to have a little bit of variety. And otherwise, there we go. Jim the Shark and Lasalion the Scythe. Okay, so I have no idea what these guys are going to be, but generally they are infantry, so I don't really care, to be honest. I kind of want them to be really good at athletics. Uh, maybe we should get them... Uh, you know what? Let's just do scouting. Ugh, it seems like we're always going for the same thing every single time now. But yes, steward, medicine, and scouting. Steward, medicine, and scouting. There we go. Because generally, most of these people I'm probably going to be making into their own clan leaders. And if I don't give them these skills, they're going to have an inherent weakness. You know, for example, if I don't give them scouting, then they're not going to be able to see enemies before they inevitably get attacked. And as a result of that, they're just going to get picked on again and again. And obviously, I would like to try and prevent that if at all possible. Okay, oh look, Jean-Luc Hackard is now speaking to us. Hello there, sir. T. Earl Grey Hot. Yes, indeed. All right. Uh, let me have a look here. No, that helmet is not particularly good, but I will give it to a variety of other people. These guys do not want horses, so I will have to lock those individually. I kind of wish that they would lock horses automatically, but I understand why they don't, because obviously, you know, they are um, they're thinking that you're probably going to want to use a horse, right? Anyway, let's just take a look at some of their... Oh, look at that. He actually has 100, uh, 100 riding skills, so that's pretty good. What's his athletics like? Am I not seeing athletics right now? Oh, it's at the top. Okay. Oh, he, he, he's actually pretty even. Yeah, he's actually pretty even. What about this guy? He's got much more athletic skill. And his writing is terrible. So um, if I wanted to, I could make this guy use a horse. But I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, Dareem is obviously still uh, perfectly fine, and he's absolutely fantastic. I think he's actually possibly going to be our first, um, you know, like vassal, basically, because he just has such great stats. I mean, basically every single statistic he has, apart from tactics, admittedly, and maybe leadership as well, is very good for being a vassal. I mean, scouting, medicine, steward, all that wonderful stuff. It's going to be really, really good for him. At least I think it's going to be pretty good. Otherwise, let's take a look at my perks because we have leveled up once again. And look at this, look at this. We finally have 250 in athletics. Let's have a look here. Increase your stagger damage threshold by 50% while on foot. Let's not talk about that. Increase your armor by 10% while on foot. That sounds pretty fun. Let's do that one. And what else do we have here? Charm skill. Okay, so here we go. I actually wonder whether they have changed parade at all. Hmm. 
Uh, I think they've changed this one. I think they've changed public speaker. I'm not entirely sure, but renown gain from battles is increased by 30%. I think that's actually kind of amazing. If you care about gaining renown, then that's really, really good. But it is very late in the charm skill tree. And by that point, you might already be tier 6, dependent on how many battles you've done. Because obviously, I've not done that many battles. And I think my, my clan is already clan tier 3, 4, 5. I don't know. I think it's 5 by now. So it might take a little bit longer for me to get there. But um, actually, you know what? Should I just go for this? Because even though I've said in the past that I think Parade is one of the most powerful perks ever, because, well, plus five loyalty bonus, I mean, you know, that's really, really good. Uh, there are a number of policies that you can implement when you are the leader of your own faction that completely negate the problem with loyalty. I obviously don't know whether that's still the case, because this is a new version of the game I'm playing, but I'm actually going to go for Public Speaker. I'd like to see how much... Um, how much wonderful renown we can gain now as a result of that. You gain double relations with the Lord when you aid them in battle. That sounds pretty fun. I don't really care too much for this though. Increase companion limit by one. Alright. I mean, sure, I guess. But uh, that's... that. I gotta say, that's kind of... Uh, it's a little bit lackluster in my opinion. I, f I feel like for a 250 skill level perk which is already relatively difficult to get to under normal circumstances because, let's face it, I am using mods that increase my speed of leveling. And... I mean, I'm only at 228. And a normal person that is playing the vanilla game is... well, gonna take a very, very long time to get here. Obviously, I don't have five focus points in this or whatever, but it's still, it, w it would still take a very, very long time to get to 250. And then at that point, you're going to be rewarded with plus one companion. I mean, no offense. You know, I'm sure there's going to be someone that's going to be upset by what I just said, but still, you know, it is just the case that it just doesn't seem like a good payoff. At least, that's what I think. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe you think it's good. I don't know. But anyway... Um, yeah, we're, we're pretty good right now. Unfortunately, Dearth Art is launching a massive... Oh, hello! <laughs> so Rook, he saw Dearth Art coming, and he thought to himself, Oh yes, that is a tasty morsel, and he is now about to absolutely murder him six ways from Sunday. Oh yes, there we go. Alright, let's do this. This is a massive battle against... The Azurai and the Vlandians, so those two factions up against each other, and we're going to see what we can do. So I'm, uh, I'm very, um, very, very much looking forward to this. All right, so mostly Azurai units, and um, okay, uh, I, I suppose this is another time where I'll say, let's see who is going to get the most kills out of all, uh, out of all of our companions. And you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to tell everyone to charge in, with the exception of my archers. I will be putting my archers on a hill somewhere, but I will tell everyone else to charge in because I want them to attack with reckless abandon. I want them to have the potential to gain the most kills possible, and we're going to see just who is capable of doing the most damage. So... Hopefully it will be uh, your selection, whoever that may be. There's the list, so if you want to pause the video, you can take a look and you can see just who is in, in, in this battle. I am going to bet on Mr. Deadeye. I want Mr. Deadeye to get the most kills because I personally like him a whole bunch because he's, he's our first companion. I think he has a lot, of, um, a lot of personality to him, even though he's literally just, you know, random lines of code, but... I, I, I really do think that he has done a fantastic job of sort of ingratiating himself into this series and becoming quite a legend in his own right. So we'll see what he's capable of doing here. Oh yes, and I should probably also mention as well, by the way, you know that slow-mo thing that happens when you select your, your orders? 
Uh, the developers have said that you can disable that if you don't like it. So you can continue to order your units around in real time. And that's actually really nice. I, I think that that's a really good decision. And generally, I think most of those mm, design decisions should have a toggle of some kind. You know, there should be an option to disable whatever. And, you know, generally more customization options are never a bad thing, right? Because you never know what people are going to like to do. Sometimes people like to... Mm, you know, uh, play the game in this way or that way or whatever way, you know, and it, more player choice is always a good thing in my opinion. So anyway, let's see what we can do here. I have no idea if anyone has died yet, by the way. So if anyone has actually died, then that is not very good. Seems like Lundana is getting right in there. She seems to be getting so many kills right now. Oh yeah, she's a polearm user, right? Yeah, she's a polearm user. That actually makes sense. That actually makes much more sense than I uh, than I remembered because she is going to be able to kill a lot of the enemy's cavalry. Fakir's doing fantastically. Dareem, Dareem's going in there. Oh, my favorite for the uh, for the upcoming vassalage potentially that I'm going to um, go for. He ha he just got a double kill. Fakir, he has now killed another one. Very nice. Good work, sir. Dareem, he has killed another. Wait a minute. Did, did Fakir just get eliminated? I think Fakir just got eliminated. Okay, that's actually kind of sad. I was hopeful that he would actually survive a little bit long, a little bit longer, <laughs> as I almost get absolutely murdered. Oh, I kind of wanted to shoot a couple of these guys. I mean, I kind of wanted to get a couple of kills, because me getting a couple of kills is going to result in a lot of experience gain. There we go. Okay, we actually just killed it. We just killed a recruit. Really? Just a recruit? Come on. Surely we can do better than that. Or maybe not. Okay, another recruit. Well, I mean, it's giving me decent bow skill, but I would really very much appreciate eliminating someone a little bit higher tier, because if I can eliminate someone higher tier, I'm going to get so much experience. I mean, literally, I'm having to kill Vlandian recruits, because apparently that's all I'm capable of. <sighs> what a... What a terrible disappointment. <laughs> oh well, it happens, it happens. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. I think the enemy is spawning in from somewhere else. I'm actually not entirely sure where at the moment. Let's have a look. Oh, just over there by the looks of things. Okay, let me see if I can speed over there real fast. Okay, I've got five shots. Let me see if I can get a couple of kills in the meantime. <sighs> He says as he basically misses the most easy to hit shot in the world. I mean, there are so many enemies right there. Oh, nice, a headshot. Very good. I like that. I like headshots. Okay, seems like we are maybe having some problems now. But I have no idea about our own forces. I have. I, I, I'm going to take a look at their kills after this. I don't think I can. Um, I don't think I can kind of spare it at the moment. shot in the face okay well that's actually kind of disappointing i thought to myself i'm kind of uh, you know uh, inhabiting or should we say uh well what, what, what is that uh, what is that word I'm, I'm looking for right there I'm, I'm, I'm currently imbued with the the power of the berserker because i was just running into the enemy's lines doing so much damage and being able to avoid getting myself murdered in the process but unfortunately i did eventually fall and it seems like mm, some of our companions are also getting taken down now because the Vlandians are now starting to deploy their Vlandian sharpshooters. And they are doing so much damage, unfortunately, that they are able to eliminate a number of our companions in the process. Let me speed things up a little bit here. And then we're going to take a look and see what kinds of kills our companions have gotten. So let's take a look. Okay, yeah, uh, Lath. Lath is the winner. Lath got 17. 17 kills. 
Polmark only managed to get three, so that's kind of unfortunate. Sotheris was really, really good. He got 13 as well. And Thule only got five. I'm kind of surprised, to be honest. I'm kind of surprised. Okay. Well, whatever the case, we now have more Azurai veteran infantry that can level up. And we are going to give them, once again, scouting... <laughs> I mean, does it, does it really matter? Scouting, medicine, steward? I mean... What are they even going to do? Lath the Blade. That's a pretty cool name, to be honest. And Samar the Scythe. Hmm. Nice. I like that. Okay, so yeah. Otherwise, Darim only got four kills. He started off very strong with that double kill, but then he wasn't able to follow that up with anything else, which is kind of sad. And uh, Salia actually got the same amount of kills as Darim, and Darim is a Distinguished Service Companion which means that inherently he has better stats because Salia is a uh, native companion to the game itself rather than being introduced to our party by Distinguished Service. So that, that, that is actually kind of interesting. Anyway, there you go. We increase our relation with the Emir himself. This guy we fought before. Gonna let him go. And we're basically gonna be letting everyone pretty much go because that makes the most sense. King Durthard, though, I'm actually wondering whether I should take him prisoner, to be fair, because I'm actually thinking that maybe it would be an idea to um, maybe uh, get get ransom for him, you know, maybe get ransom for him or something like that. I think that might be quite fun. Anyway, uh, I don't have a lot of prisoner space, unfortunately, and I'm going to be limping over to Ortizia right now. You can see here that I'm literally running at 1.0 speed at the moment, which is really, really bad. But I'm very much hoping that I will be able to maintain control over some of the higher tier prisoners. Hopefully that will be the case. And hopefully Ortizio is not actually under siege. No, it is not actually under siege. So that's fantastic. There we go. We made it in time to be able to sell 24,000 as well as Durthart himself. That is exactly... I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm actually happy to do that. I'm happy to give Durthart back because I don't really want to be lugging him all over Calradia. And it does, it does give our forces an opportunity to capture him again. So that's actually kind of fun, right? I think that's actually kind of fun. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Did we loot any wonderful bows? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Wait a minute. Am I spending any money right now? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, oh, this guy's got some good riding skill. Okay, I'm going to let him uh, stay with his riding, uh, his, stay with his mount. This guy's also got good riding skill, so I'm going to let him stay with his mount as well, because their athletics, while it is better, they still have a decent amount of riding skill, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, yeah, so I'm happy with what they did there. And uh, I think, you know what? I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. And we are now Clan Tier Four. Oh, I actually thought we were clan tier five. Oh well, never mind. But we are clan tier four, and I have a maximum company size of 176. That's actually insane. That's really, really good. By the way, bear in mind, the only reason why I have regular units right now, because my eventual aim in this series is to have an army solely comprised of companions. Oh yes, only companions in our army. And I'm talking about 200 plus companions all in our army. And then we'll see what actually happens with them. I think that's going to be so incredibly fun. And we're going to see whether I can even make that work. Because maybe I can't, you know, maybe I can't make it work. But we'll no doubt find out relatively, uh, it, well, I suppose in due time. I was about to say relatively soon, but no, it's probably not going to be relatively soon, but we will find out in due time. Anyway, Ethan Bold the Bold's doing okay, as you can quite clearly tell. He's up there. Doing a pretty decent job. Is he actually making me money? Uh, he's making me less money than Atalon, uh, because obviously Atalon has been at this for a while, but our mercenary contract is making us the most. Spring of Gold's not doing too badly as well, as you can see right there, so it's not too bad. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.